right, once again, thank you very much for joining Industrial Talk, and thank you very much for your support. We are dedicated, this platform right here, the Industrial Talk platform is dedicated to you, industrial professionals all around the world, because you're bold, brave, and dare greatly. As you can tell by the buzz in the background, we were on site, Fabtech, Atlanta, Georgia, an incredible event, a must-attend event, and I'll have all of the event information out on Industrial Talk, but so that you know, September 11th through the 14th, 2023 is the next installment, and it's up in Chicago, and I'm, you're not going to be disappointed. It was incredible. I, 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 I put it right up there with all the other great events that we've been to and broadcasted from. And now in the seat, in the hot seat, we have Bob Willig, CEO of SME.org. And you're saying, hey, what is SME.org? Society of Manufacturing Engineers. And they are part of the sponsors at Fabtech. And I'm telling you, you go out to their organization and you, you know what they're committed to? They're committed to education. It's all right there. They're committed to collaboration. Boom, right there, right there. I'm looking at the website right now. And they're definitely there to help support innovation and bring that into the manufacturing space. It is noble, right there. I'm looking out at that website, and it is just chock full of things to do and ways to connect. Go out to SME.org. Now, Bob and I were talking about all of the unique and things that are changing in the manufacturing space. It was a great conversation, and it was such an honor to be able to um, chirp and chat with that wonderful professional. So you too, because you're here to learn with me, come learn with me. Here's Bob. How are you doing? Hey, doing fantastic. And do you think the conference, you're going to have to say that. I, I, it's, a, it's a leading question. I know what it is. Let me just sort of fill in. Hey, is the conference going well for you? It's going incredibly well. I'm <laughs> very pleased by all the excitement and enthusiasm over the last couple of days. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. I am just absolutely enjoying it. Uh, a lot of people are enjoying it. Let me tell you, Scott. Yeah, it, they're, it, they're working together, they're collaborating, they're communicating, they're talking about manufacturing, they're talking about driving next steps in manufacturing. So anyway, yeah, it, it, it never ends. And, it, and if you're in the game, if you're having this conversation and you're, you're collaborating with people that are having this, it's exciting. Indeed it is. You can feel the buzz as you walk around the different halls here in Atlanta, Georgia. The only problem with... Uh, C, because we're an A. We are an A. We, it, it's a time change when we go over there. We always have to <laughs> sort of walk and take the chime and change the time. Th those who've been to the convention center here before realize it's got its own zip code. It is huge. It's, <laughs> and it's it's filled to the brim. It is. It is. It's in, it, it, The noise, the enthusiasm, the excitement, uh, it is. So here's one of the conversations that are always happening. I got the tech, got the passion. People are, are delivering solutions that are satisfying the challenges that are happening today. One of the things that uh, I want to know and have your insights into is, one, is, is the digital transformation juggernaut uh, available for the small to mid-size manufacturers businesses? It's a big challenge in our market today because clearly digitalization and issue 4.0, connected shop floor activities is driving competitiveness across our industry. But you're absolutely right in asking that question because many small to medium sized manufacturers are still asking the question, how do I get there? Where do I start? Who do I see? How do I learn? How do I need to get there? And as we all know, over 95% of manufacturing done in the United States is done by small and medium sized manufacturers. So if the large guys are going to maintain and grow the competitiveness of the ecosystem, the small and medium-sized guys got to learn and they got to get on the train. It's a non-negotiable. Indeed it is. And I think that it, uh, if you're not truly seeking out that education, that desire to collaborate, because I don't think you have all the answers. I think that is a correct, you know, conversation to have within it. And then if you're not focused on finding innovative solutions, then your business is going to struggle because there are companies out there that's doing that. It, it reminds me of the lean manufacturing journey that many of us started 10, 15 years ago. And I use the word journey 
because it never really ends, it never really starts, it just continues to progress. People said, how, how do I get involved? What does this mean to me? Geez, it's, it's scary if I don't understand it. And you take it one step at a time, and smart digitalization, Industry 4.0 is much the same way. There's no big bang theory that says overnight you're gonna get smart. It's an everyday occurrence to get a little bit better, start connecting your equipment, understanding how they talk to each other, and make your factory floor more efficient. So for the listeners out there, we we went right into the, the nuts and bolts. Let's let's Indeed. sort of back off a little bit. Bob, give us a little sort of 411, your little uh, resume on why you're such an incredible professional. And then I want to talk a little bit about SME, the objective behind SME, and then we can talk more about what we were talking about. Sure, Scott. Thank you. So I started my career roughly 35 years ago. Feels like 50 years ago. I was ago, just going to say you started at age five. Uh, you're welcome. You're way too kind. I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> but I started as a design engineer, working in the manufacturing space. I was working in stamping, fixture design, going to school at night, uh, looking at a mechanical engineering degree. Ironically, 35 years ago, SME, the Society of Manufacturing Engineers, introduced me to my love of manufacturing through gaining access to different manufacturing plants. And it was cool. It was interesting to see the conversion of ideas, thought, and designs into products that we use every day. So over those last 35 years, I've had opportunities to run all sorts of different manufacturing organizations from running factories, working on the factory floor, being operations managers, growing all the way into running different businesses globally, but all based on manufacturing. So my, my understanding of this area grew as I went through lean journeys, I'm a Toyota production system disciple, through digitalization of factory floor, in, implementing industry 4.0, connected connectivity across factory floors, factory equipment driving, tremendous strides in competitiveness in a market that is only getting tougher. I, I don't even know where to go with that there. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm a, <laughs> definitely you have the street cred. Now, when we start talking about SME, what, what is the objective behind the organization? Um, well, the Society of Manufacturing Engineers, we know ourselves as SME, was started 90 years ago, initially by roughly 31 individuals around developing next generation ideas for tooling. So 90 years ago, we started what has been an incredible journey over the last 90 years. If you look at our mission in today's world, we focus on two key areas. It's inspiring and developing the next generation of workers and workforce in the manufacturing arena. That means both talking to kids and young adults and getting them inspired and excited about manufacturing careers, as well as generating lots of interest in those who are already in the manufacturing career to stay there, learn more in advance, go after second chance citizens, returning war vets, also expanding the opportunity to bring more people into this area. In addition to that, SME focuses on advancing manufacturing technology. If you, if you look around at what we do here, we convene large groups of people together to communicate and both commercially work together, the relationship commercially, obviously buying and selling what brings people to the factory floor, but we also convene 20, 25, 30,000 people together here alone, and we have over 140 technical conferences being held concurrently with this event you're at today, advancing manufacturing technology to the next level. So two key focused areas around workforce development and advancing manufacturing technology. So here's a question. Do you think that the technology, if that's number two, I got it on my notes, so yep. don't say it's not because it's on my notes. Oh, and they're not prioritized one over the other. Okay, either. just uh, number two here. Yeah. Um, do you find that there's this speed that uh, it, it, it was, I got the technology, it's all good, and then all of a sudden it just seemed like there was this, this ramp up of just solutions and it was just like, boom. Well, let me, let me answer it specifically first. Let's talk about additive manufacturing. Which oh, my, my background includes quite a bit of experience in additive manufacturing. It, it unfortunately became a technology solution looking for a problem to solve. And, and instead of being an industry pull of that technology needed to address key fundamental issues, product design, product development, light weighting, internal development of products, meaning internal versus out, out outside in, it became a solution looking for a problem. People didn't know what to do with it. And so only now are we really starting to understand through DFAM or Design for Additive Manufacturing, how do we look at a part from the inside out to take advantage of what 
additive manufacturing can do for us. So it had a tremendous growth curve and it still does. It's growing at probably 20% per year across multiple markets. We really have to step back and talk about where can it best be used. And that's true in other areas and technologies like lean. Lean became a thing of charts on the walls for a long time before people understood it fundamentally meant waste minimization, variation reduction, and then all of a sudden it took off. And so, yes, in answer to your question, things get a, a head start, they slow down, and then they pick back up again as the industry really understands what it means for them. See, I, I find that uh, something similar to, there was this big, uh, big push with IoT. I'm going to collect data, I'm going to get that data off of those assets, and I'm going to be able to mine that data, I'm going to have all this, and then all of a sudden it just becomes a, a tsunami of data I don't know what to do with. Right. And... And there were, there were ideas of saying, oh, this is going to be transformative. I think we're catching up, and everybody's finally realizing, yeah, I, I do need this. I, just, I do need to figure out that solution. So I, I came out of different manufacturing arenas in the aerospace, defense industry, the automotive industry. But one thing all our customers were asking us for is tra traceability. I call it birth certificate of the product. Which machine was it used on, made by which person, at what shift? So obviously if we have a problem in, that, in the industry, we can book more pretty closely where that product came from, what's the root cause behind the failure, and go and fix it. So you think about the value of that data, the ability to utilize it to frankly save life and limb, but also save money if we don't have to bring back parts that aren't bad. So yes, there's lots of data out there. The biggest question is what to do with it. It, it's it's massive, and, and again, there's gold in it, and, and let's just be candid, a lot of it is like, okay, it's data, but does it really, like, I don't want to be a data scientist, but, you know, data scientists will just continue to geek, 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 geek right into it, and, and, and never, it's just, it's just, and I don't text me and say, Scott, I'm a data scientist, it's just <laughs> FYI, I just, I, I appreciate you deeply. When we start talking about uh, 3D printing, Yes. Additive uh, manufacturing. Talk about traceability. Here's this company. I don't remember the name. Sorry. But the company, they were able to take uh, nanotechnology, put it into the, ma the material, the additive material, and be able to, with light, trace that, that product. Oh, fantastic. It's, it's I mean, cool. And industry, it was just like dust. The industry will scream for that. I, I want to come back just for a second. Yeah, please. Move down. I'll say data is only data until it becomes information and then it becomes useful. So the challenge isn't collecting the data, the data the data is there. The understanding is how to collect it yeah. and use it and that's where it becomes information. So and and, and I would imagine that, that again there's there's the need to I don't know how to do that. I know that it yep. does exist. And then if I'm a manufacturer, I, I, I I've got my own challenges over here. They're right over here. Oh yeah. And and Everywhere. there are challenges. And so I want to have simplicity Visibility and saying green good, red bad. Hundred percent. You know, yes. and and let the analytics take that data and say green good, yellow hey, FYI, red bad. As a manufacturing practitioner, I, I want to reduce variation in my manufacturing process so I can guarantee every part is good. But you know, if those parts control life or limb, you may have to do it another way. And that's where I think the digital twin concept comes into play yes. here in a huge way. Yes. We can create a digital exact copy of a part we have made today, and then we can test it, try it out, and understand it without actually destroying the part. Yeah. And understanding what it means, it's an underdeveloped but rapidly growing technology opportunity. <laughs> you said it, baby. And, and it is. See, this is where the, uh, the concern happens because you're, it's rapidly changing. Data twin, uh, uh, a digital twin, excuse me, <laughs> got all the digital twin, uh, AI, uh, IoT, and all of these things are coming at me, you know, five by five. They're just hammering me, and oh, yeah. I'm a, just a man, and I know I, I know I need to do it. I'm, I just find I need to trust somebody. So, so blatant advertisement for SME just for a minute. It's, there it is, right it's there. It's one of the things that we do. We're a nonprofit. Don't know if I emphasize that yet. We're a nonprofit, which means every dollar we make in the commercial side of our relationships, we pour right back into our industry. We don't have shareholders. We don't have stock grants. We don't do any of that. That's the concept of our nonprofit focus. And so we, we bring people together. We convene them through our technology communities. We bring them together through our membership organizations, through our foundation, and we can talk about that later with scholarships yep. and programs. Yep. 
But the idea is we can become a resource for for folks to come, manufacturers to come, who don't know where to go to get information, whether it be on Industry 4.0, smart manufacturing, and we just convened in a large relationship with Sesame, the Manufacturing Institute on Smart Manufacturing. Together we are looking to advance rapidly the adoption of smart manufacturing in small and medium-sized manufacturers. Come to us. Come to us. See, talk to us. You're, you're, you're speaking my language. One of the I went to a show, and there were, there were just clear themes. It, the technology is the technology. I got it. It's good. Spot on. Thank yep. you. But it was always around, yes, I need to do it. Where do I start? And who do I trust? And is this going to be taking up all my time, which I don't have? But I need to do it. So manufacturers, small to mid, yep. big ones, they're big. But the small to mid, they need help. They need, and that's why I like uh, SME. Well, they, dot org. They, SME dot org. Yes, thank you very much for that. So last week, along with Sesame, the Smart Manufacturing Institute, we announced the creation of the Smart Manufacturing Executive Council. So this is 17 large corporations that we are partnering and bringing together, 18 individuals, 17 large. You're saying, Bob, are you going to teach Boeing to be smart? No, of course not. But we're going to help teach their suppliers to be smart. So the idea is bringing this coalition of 17 companies together to drive forward next generation advancements in education, awareness, knowledge, and training in the smart manufacturing area. Which then brings me to the point of saying, hey, you're talking next gen, inspiring the next generation of, uh, of you know, the workforce. How does, how does uh, your organization do that? In a couple of different ways. What a, what a great question. So first and foremost, our education foundation is just that. It's a part of SME, but it's a foundation focused on charitable giving. It's focused on education and next generation education of manufacturing practitioners at a younger level. So for example, we have a very robust scholarship program focused on awarding scholarship monies for two and four year college programs. So community college and four year degree programs. In, in, in students who are inspired and educated to go be a part of the manufacturing ecosystem. So we support that every year through endowed scholarships, SME scholarship focus programs and others. That's one area. The second, we have a program called our Prime School Program, Partnership Response in Manufacturing Education. I know it's a, it's a funny acronym, eh, whatever. Prime. It's been around for a number of years and effectively what we do is we go into high schools and we reestablish vocational education programs. So we provide training, we provide assets, we provide the teacher with curriculum around seven specific pathways, which would include everything from gd &T to additive manufacturing to learning how to program a tabletop Haas mill to learning how to weld. When these kids graduate high school, we give them a certification exam, and if they pass, many of them do, they can go right into industry if they want. They have an industry-recognized certification in these key areas, or if they want to continue on into a two- or a four-year program, we may end up being able to help them in scholarship support, as long as it's around manufacturing engineering or manufacturing uh, education, and move forward from that. So our focus is to inspire and educate that next generation of young talent to want to come be a part of the manufacturing ecosystem. How do you track the engagement? That's a great question. So, so for example, in the state of Michigan in 2022, we are establishing 16 new vocational education high schools. We'll be doing the same here in Georgia in 2023, amongst other states. We keep track of those kids. We understand how many of them who graduate end up going into manufacturing-related fields. Over 80% of our prime school kids today graduate and move into manufacturing-oriented jobs. So a very high return on that investment to get kids engaged and involved in manufacturing. I like it. I, it gets me out of bed in the morning. It's, it's thrilling to go see these kids yeah. and realize they start to get the understanding of the gift they've been given and the opportunity for an economically viable, safe, long-term career opportunity in manufacturing. That is evolving, growing, changing, and it's it's global. It doesn't just stop at the the wall. Or your community it can you can just sort of hang out there, but but this. What, what you advocate, what your organization supports, is, is a global solution. And it's, it's, Absolutely. And it's just, it's, it, it's an exciting time. So I have to talk about membership. I talked about our foundation. So our membership 
uh, our membership focuses on value proposition for members, current and future members who want to become part of our membership, be a member of SME. They gain access to significant member benefits, opportunities. We had a member meet up here where all the members are given access and opportunity, special opportunity to the exhibitors who are here. This is on an individual basis. We have roughly 15,000 members and it's growing. 15,000 members today were given access through chapters, networking opportunities, special focus on some career development activities, resume reviews, job boards, opportunity to communicate with their peers across the network, which is SME. We also have a corporate membership program, which does much the same thing, bringing in big corporations to be a part of part of SME. So we have big corporations like Boeing and Lockheed Martin, our General Motors, our corporate members of SME, both to help contribute to our manufacturing education programs, but also to benefit from what we're doing. That I like. I like that a lot. And, it, and it's really in line with uh, what, <laughs> here's my plug. Industrial talk is all about. It's all about the education. You're nailing it. The organization is nailing it. It's all about collaboration. It's there. Because I, I, I believe, unlike whatever, you have to be able to collaborate with other industry professionals to be able to have that real conversation to solve problems. I don't know what to do. Oh, you know how. And then be able to work on that. And then, of course, if you're not going toward the innovation side, then you're, you're not making your organization or your, your manufacturing process as efficient as it possibly can to be competitive. Correct. And, and that's, that's a recipe for success in the long term. I'll, I'll talk about one other area because you brought it up. It's the how do we communicate to people? Let's face it, there are generational differences in how people want to be communicated yeah. to from TikTok, and no, you're not going to see me dancing on TikTok, Scott, I'm sorry. But, Note to self, but, uh, get Bob to TikTok. But, uh, so, social media is a great way to get a message out quickly, and it's one of the ways we do it, but it's not the only way, and generationally, there are, there are groups of people that don't want to be communicated to that way, so we have a very robust media-based program, so every month we publish Manufacturing Engineering Magazine. Over 90,000 print copies every month go out and are read. I guarantee you it's on the plant floor of most most small and medium-sized manufacturers in the canteen. The guys are flipping through it during lunch. Great, robust articles around next-generation technologies, advancements in manufacturing wow. engineering. So over a million of these a year go out, and it's huge demand continuing to be seen for this. Every quarter we put out Smart uh, smart Manufacturing, which is a, obviously a magazine dedicated to both smart manufacturing and next generation cutting edge technologies in these areas. Equally high level of readership, very interested in. These are paper, people see these. We also make them both available digitally on our website before we even mail them out. And so very high level of download and interest in these areas. We do four uh, different industry annual, uh, call, it, call it workbooks or re industry reports around additive manufacturing, around medical additive manufacturing and others. So we're trying to communicate in different ways such that you have a variety of opportunities to receive information from SME, whether it's digital, whether it's pushed through social media or whether you get it in your mailbox around next generation advancing technologies in manufacturing. You, you've had this conversation before, haven't you? Uh, once or twice. So. A, a couple of times, because it just rolls right off the old well, tongue. Th man. Thank you. I'm, I'm very passionate about the opportunity to give back to an industry that's been so good to me for the last 35 years. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, I, there's there's so much, that, gosh, there's so much. I have one last question, because I can sure. continue. Where do you see it going? What, what What's that strategic vision of your organization? What What is it? Oh, it's great. Where are you so going to go? We just spent a whole day with our board talking about this, so it's as fresh as it gets, right? There it is, man. Right off. So, so SME aspires to be the preeminent thought leader in manufacturing and the manufacturing ecosystem. And what does that mean? What does thought leader or thought leadership mean? It means when people think about the great topics we've talked about for the last 20 minutes or yeah. so, and they think, where can I go? Who can I talk to? SME should be rolling off their tongue. And again, I'll remind everybody, we're a nonprofit. This is not because we want to grow our coffers. It's because we truly want to lift all of the industry up to another level. I believe that 
the middle class in America was built around our manufacturing prowess through the yeah. industrial revolution. Oh, yeah. I'm interested in not only keeping it oh, that yeah. way, but by continuing to grow it. So SME will be the preeminent thought leader in manufacturing going forward. We will continue to advance our workforce. We will continue to provide creative insights into education and learning programs such that we bring everybody forward. So we're, we're not a school, we're not a university, but what we are is a curriculum development in manufacturing and manufacturing education that can bring everybody forward. And then finally, continuing to advance manufacturing technology and help industries pivot. We're never gonna get away from the fundamentals of manufacturing, forging, machining, stamping, grinding, welding. That's I never hope gonna go away. Yeah, we can't. We will help continue to push that forward, but also bring next generation technologies forward and into the ecosystem. I'm all giddy. <laughs> it's easy to get that way. It is, man. I am. I, I, I mean, you're, you're chirping my chirpy. I like it, man. All right. This is where we ask how people get a hold of you. How do you get a hold of you? So the easiest way to get, of us is, get, get a hold of us is come straight to SME.org. Visit our website. Read. Take it all in. Become a member of SME. Start to enjoy the benefits of either an individual membership or a corporate oh, membership man. and help us grow. There it is, man. Bob, you look fantastic. Hey, Scott, thank you very much. I'm a I better person to because of you. <laughs> I am. I am a better person. Love all right, it. we're going we're gonna to have all the contact information for Bob and SME out on Industrial Talk. So if you're not, if you have a hard time trying to get a hold of them, uh, you're not trying hard enough. Industrial Talk will have all the contact information. So reach out. Be a member. Once again, we're broadcasting from Fabtech, Atlanta, Georgia. This is a This is an event. This is an event that you need to put on your calendar. It is a must-attend event. Absolutely. So, see, there it is, Bob. Come Absolutely. On down. Right there, man. All right, we're going to wrap it up on the other side. Stay tuned. We will be right back. You're listening to the Industrial Talk Podcast Network. Hey, once again, thank you very much for joining Industrial Talk. That was Bob Willig, CEO, SME, Society of Manufacturing Engineers at Fabtech, on site at Fabtech must attend event you got to reach out to bob I, I don't know how else to put it if you're in the manufacturing space and you're looking for a way of being able to at least take that first step forward that's right you need to be a part of sme without a doubt it's a great organization they're pretty passionate about you and educating and the collaboration and the innovation to help you be a, a business that is successful and resilient going forward all right go out to industrial talk we'll have that all contact information for bob SME.org as well, and uh, fear not, it's all there. All right, be bold, be brave, dare greatly. We say that all the time because you deserve the celebration because you hang out with people like Bob and, and uh, SME.org, and you're going to change the world. Thank you very much for joining. We're going to have another great conversation coming from Fabtech shortly, so stay tuned.